to the saints of God. Now, that sounds a little better. I can hear myself. It is now top of the hour. We want to begin our Sunday morning Bible class. A very special welcome to all those that are joining us uh, through the Zoom platform. Hope, trust, and pray that all is well. Uh, Brother Rick is, has a medical procedure tomorrow that requires him to rest today. And, uh, so we pray that all will go well tomorrow. Everything is on schedule and everything's looking good. So thank, thank you, good Lord, for that. It's a pleasure to have each and every one of you here today, uh, here in the Bible class of the Church of Christ of Meets on Miami Gardens Drive. Welcome to our visitors. Uh, we're going to continue along the theme of evangelism. Uh, some of this will be interactive, but one of the things that is important is uh, just understanding the why. Understanding the why. Uh, and before we go any deeper into our lesson today and our, our facilitated discussion, uh, let us go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Gracious God, our Father, we thank you for yet another day. We thank you, Father, for life, health, and strength, and we just pray that as, our, as we study your word, that we will gain a deeper and better understanding so that we might answer the questions of life through your word, not our opinion, not what is popular, uh, what is trendy, but may we just hold to your holy and inspired word. Be with all that are here, be with those who are traveling, those who cannot make it, and please be with those, dear God, who choose not to assemble, who choose not to fellowship. Soften their hearts so that they might understand that in order to spend eternity with you, we got to deal with one another. In Jesus' name, amen. On that thought, that pivot point, in order to make it to eternity with God, we got to deal with people. It's God's design. Fill in the blanks. John 3, 16. For God so the world that he gave his only begotten son. That, that's what I want to pause, right? That whosoever. That's everybody. It's everybody. And throughout the day today, I will make reference to it. I'll make reference to it now. Last Saturday, I think it was, yeah, it was Saturday, that horrific, violent, evil, terrorist act that took place in Buffalo, I saw my grandmother. And I saw the pictures of the people. <laughs> because every Saturday, without fail, getting those collard greens and Jiffy cornbread. I would be so mad sitting in the car on Saturday. Why oh, we got to go to store every Saturday? And they'd always forget the Jiffy cornbread on Saturday because we'd have to get it after church on Sunday. And I wanted to go watch my football game. And why do I say that? When you just see people in this world, everybody needs to be saved. Amen. Everybody. It's easy for us in our own opinion to say that, well, he don't deserve to be saved. She don't deserve to be saved. God so loved the world that, what's that word again, that W word? Whosoever. And if more people love the Lord, we wouldn't have hate like that. See, it was God's love that prompted the establishment of Lord's church. So here's our question. Here's our why question today. Why are there so many churches? I would, don't answer out loud yet. I will, I will call on you because I want to get, I want to take a quick uh, survey of the class. We're going to go to scripture, obviously. Why are there so many churches? And a more appropriately put, why are there so many denominations? Because you look in the Bible, and to be clear for our visiting friends and saints, here's the first question. Because when organizations ask themselves, what is your Why? People individually will say, what is your why? What makes you, what motivates you? What is your purpose in life? We can answer that question individually, but today we want to look at this thing biblically. Why are there so many denominations? Saints, and I need scripture to prove it. How many churches does the Bible talk about? I see everybody saying one, and, but I need, I need scripture. Now raise your hand and give me a scripture to prove that. Because what I love about Bible class, we can talk to each other, but then two, we got people listening. You may have somebody listening that's never uh, heard that question asked so directly, and we want to get biblical answers. So we're going to go through the why there are so many denominations to help us with friends and family from an evangelistic standpoint. But I need scriptures. You know, and the elders are going to go to you first. Uh, the Bible talks about, according to you, one church. 
scripture. Brother Aldridge, give me just one scripture. Ephesians chapter 4, for the benefit of our audience that are online, Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 4. We would let scripture do the talking. Ephesians 4 and 4. Go ahead and read that, brother. There is one body and one spirit, even as we are called one hope. Now, what Brother Aldridge has done, and it's a good foundational point, so the question is, how many churches does the Bible talk about? And Brother Aldridge just took us to Ephesians 4 and 4. There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. Now, if I am a naysayer, what am I saying? That don't say there's only one church. So it demands us to, what? and I'll do this with my hands. I always do this when I'm teaching. We got to make scripture. Y'all see what I'm doing with my hands? You got to allow us to make scripture. So there's a reason, I know what Brother Aldridge is doing, there's a reason he said that he took us to Ephesians 4 and 4. Who can find a scriptural mate to Ephesians 4? Let's keep that same, same line of thought. Scriptural mate for Ephesians 4. Go ahead, Charles. Colossians 1 and 18, I like it. I just don't like that question mark on the end of that. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 18, I love that, Charles. So for those who are online, who are taking notes, welcome to Bible class. The Bible only speaks about one church and that we started in Ephesians 4. There is one body, one spirit, even as you are called in one hope of your calling. So now Charles has taken us to Colossians 1 and verse 18. Saints, we need to be able to sit down with people and walk them through scripture. Who cares what I think? Who cares what you think? What does the Bible say? Amen. Colossians 1 and verse 18. Charles, if you, you, want, if you don't mind reading that, go ahead, brother. Yes, sir. And he is the head of the body. I'm only repeating for those online. And he is the head of the body, the church. Go ahead, brother. Who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead? Who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead? Thank you, Charles, that in all things he might have the preeminence. So what we just did for the benefit of all Bible students, both here and elsewhere, the Bible said, the Bible says, it used to say in that phrase, the Bible says in Ephesians 4 and 4, that it, there is one class, one body, and one spirit, even as you are called in one hope of your call. There is one body. In Colossians 1 and verse 18, and he is the head of the body. Well, how many bodies are there? One body. So now we get some authority, ownership, and he is the head of the body. We don't know who he is yet. We'll get it contextually. Head of the body. What happens there? Comma, the church. What is the body? Saints? The church. How many bodies are there? Ephesians 4 and 4. Now, who's, who's the head of it? Well, that's the firstborn from the dead. Hmm. So whoever this is that's the head of the body, the head of the church, is the firstborn from the dead. So did he die? Class, the question, did he die? But what happened? Firstborn from the dead. What does that mean? Resurrected, rose again, firstborn from the dead. So whoever he is was dead. He's the firstborn of, from the dead, all right? That in all things. He, so this is so what people get into, and I wanted to say this out loud and very clearly. In people's signatures now, and it's become quite commonplace, like people include their pronouns in their email signature. He or she, and some people say just it. Let's be clear. The Bible doesn't talk about just some, whoever you are, God. The Bible is very specific. From a gender standpoint, he is the head of the body. Are we clear? Not marriage, that rules out marriage. Amen, saints? He is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things, Give me that pronoun. He might have the preeminence. So whoever this is that has 
what does word preeminence mean? Preeminence, preeminence. Pre means before, but I need eminence. I need all of that. I like the pre. A prefix is something that comes before the word. What's your prefix? Mr. Gale Nelson, you're looking at prefix, suffix, to, you know, I'm technically pre Mr. Gale S. Nelson Sr. I'll use that suffix that makes me feel old. I mean, I just stay with Gale as Nelson. All right. <laughs> so, what, what does preeminence mean, class? Can't quite understand what y'all said. I, I got the before, and that's right. Pre is before. Preeminence. Y'all can Google it. <laughs> Preeminence. I know one of y'all hoping to go and Google that. Go ahead, Slocum. Preeminence. I need to know what that means. Y'all don't let me keep me in 10 minutes. I'm trying to move on, make some more points. The authority. I like the authority. See, that in all things, he might have the preeminence. The interesting thing about might is some people will show him the authority and the respect, and guess what? Some won't. Let us be clear. So preeminence, did somebody look up the official definition of preeminence? What'd y'all get? I'm not going to tell you that. Y'all can work. If you go to college class, you do your research, you go to a math class, you can bring a calculator. I have no issue with you looking up a word. All these phones, you know, nobody looked up that word yet? I'll just back there saying, I'll not use this phone. That's all right. That's all right, Audrey. That's all right. So preeminence, nobody got it? It speaks to authority. For time's sake, I got to move on. Y'all let me down and I'm looking up word stuff now. Uh, y'all know y'all look up stuff on your phone. Preeminence speaks to authority. Pre, before. So he has the authority, the priority. He is held in such high regard over how many things? All things. So to be clear, the Bible speaks about one body. That body is the church. Who is ahead of that? Well, we didn't say Colossians 118. I'll make you all do something here. It just says he in Colossians 1 and verse 18. We have to deal with that in context. So this drill, this exercise today is helping us walk through. See, we'll say, see, right there it is, says Christ. It don't say Christ right there. It says whoever he is is the firstborn from the dead. It says he has all authority. Boy, excuse me. He says he must be preeminent before all. You don't put anything above him. That's all it says. So don't, this is called, you may want to write this word down, exegesis, E-X-E-G-E-S-I-S, E-X-E-G-E-S-I-S, -E -E -S -S, exegesis. You, I see two exit signs, really there's four of them in here. I'm looking at two exit signs, exegesis. So exit, you pull from, you pull from what's in the scripture, exegesis. Now, there's something called exegesis. You put stuff in. That's what the world does. We even in the church sometimes do that foolishness. Don't you put in the scripture what's not there. All we see in scripture. All we see in scripture. Good to see you, Sister Pippen. I don't know if you brought a cake, but God bless you. It's all right. Exegesis means you put in. You put in what's, what's not there. So all we can take away from Colossians 1 and verse 18 is the fact that the, the body is the good saints. All we can exegete from Ephesians 4 and 4, there is one good. And that body, according to Colossians 1 and 18, is the good. And the church has a, no, no, church has a, look at Colossians 1 and verse 18, starts with an H. The church has a, and the head, we know just so far based on scripture, the head is a he. Y'all all right? What we're doing is we're just, we're just building the biblical case. And he who is the head of the church has to, has what? Go to that preeminence. Or basically he is what? Pre, preeminence, preeminence above all authority. That's all we know so far. So who's going to now take us next? So what we're doing, we're building a biblical case. So Bible class, where are you going to take me next? Because we got people listening who want to be saved, or at least are inquiring. I want somebody new. Where are you taking me, Valerie? Now keep in mind, we're building on one body, Ephesians 4 and 4. We took that to the body is the church, good mate, and the church has a head, and he has to be preeminent. Now we could easily, in context, what does context mean? See what I'm doing with my hand? What does context mean? 
use this. So my phone is near the pen. My phone is near the Bible. There's a contextual setting. So if you got a, if you're gonna make a point, Colossians one in verse eighteen, there may be something around it that can help you find out who the key is. I'm just saying. Did y'all get that context? There's maybe something. So can somebody, Valerie, don't lose your train of thought because you're gonna take me. Are you gonna keep me in Colossians one? You take me somewhere else. You, what what book? You go to Acts. Okay, we're gonna take you. You, you gonna let me take? Let's go there. Let's go there. But I want y'all to remember. I'm going to see where y'all take me. Don't y'all take me off on a beaten path, off the beaten path. You want to keep a line of thinking, a line of thought when you're teaching somebody. We know there's one body. We know that body is the church. And we know that the church has a head, that he is preeminent. Where are you taking us, uh, Valerie? Give me the scripture. Acts 26, 23. Acts 26, 23. Wait, wait, hold on. Let, me, let, let us get there now, sister. Let us get there. Okay, here we go. Acts 26, 23. Go ahead and read that, sister. That Christ should suffer, and that he should be the first that mm. should rise from the dead, and should show light unto the people and to the church. I like what you did. So now what she just connected, Sister Valerie, is Christ is the first from the dead. So now we have Christ. Because we said in Colossians 1 and verse 18 that he is the firstborn from the dead. Good. And so now in Acts 26, 23, and that he should show light unto the people and to the Gentiles. So you have a few things taking place there. And I want to, let me, instead of me just telling you, what can you extract from Acts 26, 23? I want to keep, and when I say extract, exegete, we need the key points. If you're going to study scripture, you got to be able to pull the key points out. So we, we have a, the key point that it's Christ that's the first rise from the dead. Good, Valerie. Any other key points there? Acts 26, 23. Come on, class. Audrey, what you got? I saw your hand, or maybe it wasn't. No, no, I want the next church. I want to exegete Acts 26, 23. See, let, let, me, say, let me say this to y'all. Hold on now. See, y'all gonna make me, real, we gotta work today. Hold on. Take off my preaching jacket. We're, we're in Bible class. Now, if I was teaching a, a class on leadership, uh, and I do that, as many of y'all know, uh, when I take off my jacket, I mean, we got we got to go to work. So we got to quit. Get the, don't just bounce from the script. Let's let's pull from th some things out. Otherwise, we're not learning. So in Acts twenty six twenty three, we know that Christ suffered, and we know that He was the first that should rise from the dead. That connects us with Colossians one and verse eighteen. Give me one more key point from I ain't going anywhere from Acts twenty six twenty three. One more key point, Slocum. I like where you're going, Brother Slocum is saying for the benefit of those that are listening on Zoom, you know, we know to the Jew first, but what, what is it? What is he saying here? Come on. And also to the Gentiles. So thank you, brother. Thank you. That's a cr critical point. So the, the church, that one body, that one church of which the firstborn from the dead, now we can connect Christ. Good job, Valerie. That it's a light, not just to the Jews, but to a light to, and he should show light unto the people, unto the people. Look at the context now. So that was automatically to the Jews, to the people, and to the Gentiles. So this Christ, who was the first one to rise from the dead, was for the Jews and the Gentiles. Amen, amen saints? Amen. amen just means truly the soul. That's all amen means. So when Moses stood on that on the mountain and he pronounced blessings and the, and the congregation of Israel said, amen. Because I think some people, and we, we mess it up in the church too, because sometimes when people say amen, it's like saying like a go boy. No, no, no. Amen mean, means truly it is so. Amen. That's like if somebody says there's only one church and Christ is the head, amen. So be it. It is so. So now where are we going next? So we, what have we proven so far biblically? One body, and we want to make sure we uh, have good closure because you can, we can go through the whole Bible, but we want to make sure we have a concise lesson. When Brother Lindsay taught math class, he's teaching on fractions. He had a lesson plan that was sequential thinking and teaching. So now we want to make sure we have a good closed thought because when we ask the question, why are there so many denominations? There's a whole lot of reasons why. 
There's a whole lot of reasons why, but we're going to just go ahead and cut to the chase and make sure people understand about the one church. One body. Give me the scripture. I'll, I'll make the point. You give me the scripture. One second, Charles. There is one body. I need to hear the scripture. Ephesians 4. And if you don't know it, you should write it down. Because you know that Marvin Gaye song. You know your alphabet. You know the song, Happy Birthday. Put your hand down, Charles. I ain't going to be done doing questions yet. Listen to me. We know what we know. And how do we know it? Because of repetition. It might not have been that Marvin Gaye song, but there's something you play over and over again, and you know it. There's things we do over and over again, and you know it. We need to get in the habit, children of God, brothers and sisters. I say this in love, of knowing what, you don't have to quote the scripture, but knowing where to go. You ever made, some of us, uh, some of y'all can cook so well, you know, my grandma can make a cake from scratch. She didn't you know it. Some of y'all need the Betty Crocker, Duncan Hines book. You got to have a cake box. If you got to make a cake, you got to look at it like this. Now, I may not want your cake. So you know what to do from repetition. Her mama taught her how to do it. And my grandmama taught my mama how to bake a cake. And they she can go to town. Give me some butter. Give me, they know exactly what to do. We need to be that way with scriptures. So let me make, let me state the key point. You tell me where I need to go. Or tell me a scripture that we've studied this morning. There is one body. Ephesians 4 4. Work with me, saying this is a trainer trainer class. Ephesians 4 and 4. The body is the church. Colossians 1 18. Good. He is the head of the body. Y'all left me. No, no, no. He is the head of the body. Don't take me to Acts. That ain't Acts. Colossians 1 18. Same scripture. That was the second key point. He that is head of the body, the church, is preeminent above all things. I'll give you the key point. What's the scripture? Y'all know what? Wait, hold on a second. Did I lose y'all? I'm making a key point. I need you to give me the scripture. Wait, hold on. Let me say it again. I will state the key point. You state the scripture. He that is head of the body is preeminent in all things. What's the scripture? No, it's not. The one we just read, Colossians 1 and verse 18. They told Rick told me this was the advanced class. I'm starting to question that. We've gone over two, three scriptures. I am giving you the key point in said scriptures. I need you to make the key point with the scripture. So if you get on a, a metro rail, you get on a city bus, you go to work and say, did you know that Christ is the head of the church? And someone says, show me that. The next thing you're texting me. No, you need to have it written down. Lindsay, where does it say in the Bible that Christ is the head of the church? That he's preeminent over all things. I remember that. Write it down. So now, he that is first Christ who's first, Christ who suffered, key point, Christ who suffered was a light to the Jews and the Gentiles. Where is that found? Go ahead, Jeanette. That, that is there as well, but I'm just only using the scriptures we've used so far. You are correct. That's why, yes, I was, I was thinking that, but you said it. See, I'm just, I just wanted to see, again, that's what happens when students come late to class and think they got the, you had the right answer, but you, you were late. So I want us saints, do you all understand what we're doing now? I don't want to confuse you. I'm not here to confuse you. We need to, and the word is exegesis, which means to pull from scripture what is there. Saints, when we get to the point of old school evangelism, putting the Bible between you and somebody else and pulling from that scripture what the scripture says so they can see it, souls will be saved. We don't need to add anything to it. Let the Bible speak. Amen? Amen. All right. Now, we have established through scripture, there is one body, Ephesians 4. That body is the church, Colossians 1, verse 18. And the one that, and he that's ahead of that body, the church, is the firstborn from the dead. I like when we went over to Acts 26 and 23, that Christ suffered and that he should be the first that should rise from the dead for the Jew and the Gentile. Beautiful. Now, even though she was late to class, I like where she's taking us. 
Jeanette, where you want to take us next in terms of that the church and the body? I like where you're going. Amen. See, that's that's called forgiveness. We call on those that are even late to class. Amen. Ephesians chapter. It's a great scripture to go to. Saints, I want somebody in queue next. Ephesians chapter one. Ephesians chapter one. Where are we starting, uh, Sister Jeanette? Verse 22. verse 22. Now, you know why I want to take you back one verse? What was that? What was that P word we used in Colossians one and verse 18? Pre, Pre what? Preeminence, right? Pre means what? Before eminence speaks to royalty, eminence speaks to authority. So he is before and above every authority. Watch what we just did. Now, Jeanette, Ephesians 1, give me 21. Listen. Come on. Hold your point. Far above all principality. What are we making that with? He is preeminent. Far above all principality, come on, and power, and might, and dominion. Hold your point right there. What is happening here? There is a, com there is a comparative, and there's even a superlative. So I can compare. And so my brother did this last week. He said, you know, I like a certain football team. He likes a certain football team. He made a comparison, right? And so then that leads to, you know, I think this was better than that one. But now the Bible says, whoever this is, far above all principality, in, you know, principality, you know, we think about authority, uh, all power, might, and dominion. Come on, sis. It, now, just in case you miss it on principality, power, and might, and every name that is named. Now, what far what below? Above. Equal to? Above. Not just above, but what? Above. Far above. There is nobody that is equal to the authority of Christ. Amen. Go ahead, says, finish it. And this is what people, because we're going to do, we're going to do a little study on angels. We're going to preempt it by letting people know, don't lose your mind on any angel. I want to study angels. I've always wanted to study angels. You need to know about Christ. Amen. And when we stay now, go ahead. I'll, I'll go ahead and put that on record. I'll be the Lord's will. Y'all remind me. I'll preach on angels next week. And because people, some people lose their mind. And so shows like Touched by an Angel and they had Hollywood went through this, this little phase, this angel phase, had people going crazy. I heard people even in the church saying foolish stuff. Put everything in context. Far above every name that is named, not only in this world, come on. So, but now does this scripture, Ephesians 121, tell us who it is? Does it say who it is in 21? Saints, y'all talk to me, please. Doesn't know it, know it. Who, who is it in verse 21? What, what name? So how do we look at it? Look, look, everybody look at me for a second. Look what I'm about to do again. I'm trying to help y'all. What do we need to do? Say the word. Context. Where do you need to go, Charles? Please don't let me down. Where are you going? The very next verse. Read it, Charles. Ephesians 1 and 20, for those that are watching us online. Come on. Which he, so there's another he. He wrought, the word wrought, like a wrought iron fix fence so somebody worked through christ look at what we're starting to do we got one body brother dowdell we got the, the the body is the church so one body one church he that is the first one from the dead is the head of the church y'all with me Amen. only looking at scriptures we've worked on so we know that first one from the dead is christ he's a light to the jews and the good now, now we went over to Ephesians 1, and where we started, verse 21, far above all principality, power, might, dominion, and every name that is named. In this world only, not only in this world, but in the world to come. So now, Charles, thank you so much, Charles, kept us in the contextual setting. And he went back this one verse which he, somebody, worked through Christ. Come on. When he, whoever worked through Christ, 
He raised him, Christ, from the dead. See what we did there with Acts 26, 23? Look at the Bible. He raised him from the dead. Come on. And set him at his, we're talking about two distinct people here, two distinct personalities here. So somebody worked through Christ, somebody raised him, Christ, from the dead, and somebody set Christ at his own right hand, where? In the heavenly places. Y'all all right? Let me pause. Everybody good? And that Christ is far above all principality and power, might, dominion, every name that is named, not only in this world, but also that which is to come. Now, he didn't stop there, just raising from the dead and giving him all authority. All right, Jeanette, you call this verse, verse 22, come on. For the benefit of our audience uh, online, we're reading Ephesians 1 and 22 now, and have put all things under his feet. So we talk about preeminence, he's far above everything, but now everything's under his feet, under his Give me the word, under his feet means what? Under his authority. Come on. And gave him to be the head over all things to the church. When you see those definite articles, we're reading the scripture, no, no questions, please. To the church gave him to be the head. Now, when we say a head of the church, is that... Did we make that somewhere else earlier? What scripture? No, 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 Colossians 1 verse 18. And he is the head of the body of the church. Come on now, keep reading. Verse 23. Which is his body. So the church, all things to the church, which is his body. Come on. The fullness of him that filleth all in all. Let me just pause for a minute. Who has all authority? Who gave him all authority? What is the church? Can prove it. I need scripture. Church is the body. That is correct. It, no, see, keep in mind, there's two th what I love about the specificity of the Bible. In Ephesians 1.22, the Bible says, gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body. So the church is the body. In Colossians 1 and verse 18, he is the head of the body, the church. So the church is the body and the, come on, the body is the church. And who's the head of the church? How many churches are there in the Bible? Does, is there anywhere where Christ verbalizes verbalizes that he that the church is his i need somebody new audrey i've heard from you charles i've heard from you valor i've heard from you i've heard from our late student uh jeanette we love her though lisa james where does christ verbalize where can we take somebody in scripture because right now what we have done we have made it scripture is everybody okay y'all getting back because rick told me this was the advanced class and y'all i tell you what y'all y'all building back up now Hold on, Arjun, just Lisa James. Now, go ahead, sister. Where are you going to take us? Don't let me down, Lisa. Amen. Did everybody hear that? Every member of the Lord's church. You don't have to have a photographic memory. Write this down. When something, you, you have people, you say, turn to your, open your Bible. Turn to Ephesians 1. Turn to Colossians 1.18. Turn to Ephesians chapter 4. And you let them read. They start putting it together. I recently did this, the student, I'll keep it general, the student, because they may be online, student's eyes is lit up. But at some point, so I'll come to the point of, are you ready to make that move? Because see, now it starts going against what mama and daddy and what the grandmama and you, whatever reverend so-and-so said, so-called reverend. But, but see, now you understand it. So what are you going to do about it? So now we're going to go to the scripture where Christ speaks, Matthew what, what, 16, what verse are you starting in, sis? Matthew 16, I like what you did. Matthew 16, beginning at verse 13. Go ahead and start reading that for us. I will, re I will just repeat it for the benefit of those online. 
When Jesus came to the coast of Caesarea Philippi, so Jesus had a question. He asked his disciples. The word disciple means what? Follower. Good. Put that in your notes. He asked his disciples, saying, whom do men say that I, the son of man, am? Now, let's see. Here's something that's very important. Did Jesus state who he was? Be careful. Did Jesus say who he, who he is? In verse 13, whom do men say that I, the son of man, am? Yes, he did. There's different, I mean, Jesus is Lord, he's Savior. But he says, is he the son of man? Amen. So Jesus wasn't asking, he said, whom do men say that I, the son of man? That's like me saying, brothers and sisters of the Miami Garden Church of Christ, whom do men say that I, Gail S. Nelson, one of the pastors, one of the elders here is. Did I say who I was? Yeah. So but to be mindful, Jesus had no question about who he is. Whom do men say that I, the son of man, am? And so that's, let me just pause for one second. Saints, if we question, if we don't show proof that we believe who Jesus is, it can cause others to question as well. Jesus asked his disciples, his followers, whom do, what do, men, whom do men say that I, the son of man, am? Go ahead and read. Watch this. They said, some say that thou art. That word thou art means what? You are John the Baptist. Some Elias. And that Elias, you know, you look at that in the Aramaic or the Koine Greek, Elijah. Others say you're Jeremiah, you know, it says Jeremiah, so that's the Aramaic, so Jeremiah. Some say you're John the Baptist. Some say you, the son of man, Jesus, are Elijah. Some say you are Jeremiah or one of the prophets. Is that what the disciples were saying? But the men, whom do men say that I am? What are people saying about me? But look at what said what he goes. What and then look at what Jesus does next. This is where it turns it on us. Read verse fifteen. Matthew sixteen fifteen. He saith, Jesus saith unto them, them are who are who are them? Go we'll make sure you all pay attention, disciples. Get it in context. So Jesus says then to his disciples, He saith unto them, what was his question? But whom say ye that I? Am. Now, <laughs> if we had time, we don't have time to deal with it right now. Remember when Moses asked God, well, whom shall I send? When they asked me, who sent me? What did God say to him? I am. I am. That I am. God has never had a question on who he is. Y'all gonna make me preach. Let me stop. No, 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 I'll just stop, stop, stop. It's better for everybody. I'm, we're teaching. God has never questioned his authority. Man has questioned God's authority. You tell him, I am sent you. So Jesus says, but whom do you say that I am? And here it is. Verse 16, Simon Peter. Here it is. So Simon Peter, whom many especially those in Catholicism would say that Simon Peter was the first Pope. I got a family member that helped raise me that was one of my deepest mentors. I love him to death. Remember the Lord's church who told me this in this home. And it broke my heart. Blood relative. Raised by the same woman who raised me and Rick. With, 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 along with our grandma, my cousin. I'm on the cover. I'm looking great. But well, Peter's the first pope. Peter just said in scripture, You are the what? Saints? You are the, don't say son first. You are the what? You are the Christ, the son of the dead God, living God. You are the Christ. What does that mean? The Christ. 
Messiah like that. In the French, and you think about the word uh, Messiah, which, which not, not with an A, all A's, Messiah, which gets into the massage, which gets into touching, which gets into the oil, which gets into the anointed. You are the one touched of God, not an angel, not Michael or Gabriel or anybody else. Nobody is above you. You are the anointed one of God. Amen, saints? Y'all, excuse the preacher. It's hard. You are the anointed one of God. Did he say you are a Christ? The. You are what? The Christ. You are the Christ, the son of the living God. Now, let's just pause for a minute before we go into our final thought. According to Colossians 1 and verse 18, in all things he might have the what? Preeminence. Preeminence. Now y'all finally connecting with me. Thank you. It took the whole class. <laughs> he might have the preeminence, which means what? He has the authority above all, according to Ephesians 1, verse 21 and following, far above all principality, power, might, dominion. God put how many things under his feet? So if he's the anointed one of God and God the Father put all things under his feet and he has all preeminence. And now Peter says, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Let's, let's have Christ with the last word. Go ahead and read verse 17. Here we go. And Jesus answered and said unto him, now who's the him Jesus is answering? Please, class. Peter, the first pope? No. Peter. <laughs> A disciple. So Jesus answered him. So Jesus, the anointed one of God, the one who has all authority, the one that God worked through for Jew and Gentile, Jesus now talking to Peter saying what? Read. Blessed art thou, blessed are you, Simon Bar Jonah. I love what Jesus did, just in case anybody wants to say, Simon, well, Bar Jonah may mean Pope. No, Bar Jonah means son of Jonah. You just flesh and blood. Bar Jonah. Simon, son of Jonah. Come on. For flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee. So what did Jesus do? Jesus just said, no man, no woman, no flesh and blood can take credit for what you just said. So there goes, you know, well, you know, my great granddaddy is a founder of the church. Well, that's great. That's your great granddaddy's church. It ain't the church of Christ. Amen. Come on. For flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my father, which is in heaven. Who wrought in Christ? Who put all things under his feet? Who raised him from the dead? Who put him at his own right hand? One answer, class, God the Father. And now God the Father, according to Jesus, if you believe in Jesus, if you believe in his word, Jesus says, my father set all this up. My father is the one that is to get the glory. And here it is. Verse 18, come on. I, who's speaking? Class, who's speaking? And I, Jesus, say also unto thee, who's thee? Peter. So G I, Jesus, say unto thee, Peter, son of Jonah, that no man can take credit for what you said. Come on. And look at how Jesus continues to make sure that nobody can be talking. Well, Peter's got the keys to heaven. We got to all stand before St. Peter. We don't stand before St. Peter. 2 Corinthians 5, that we must all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Let me stop hitting this thing. They ain't got a new one for me yet. Stand before Peter. Peter got to stand before God. And all mankind got to stand before God. I say also unto thee that thou art Peter. You're just Peter. And if you really break that Peter down, write in your notes, P-E-T-R-O-S. P-E-T-R-O-S. The Greek word petros means small stone. You are petros. Jesus is breaking this thing down. Jesus is taking this to the root. You are Peter, Bar Jonah, son of Jonah. You are Peter, petros. You are a small stone. Why do you have to use that? And upon this class, upon, I'll take it from here, it says, and upon this rock, this Petra, P-E-T-R-A, 
Put it in your notes, P-E-T-R-A. The Greek word Petra means a solid ledge, a solid foundation. You are a small stone. The church of Christ is not built on a small stone. The foundational principle of the Lord's church is this, that I am the Christ, the son of the living God. Upon that foundation, not you, Peter, you're too small. As they say in basketball, <laughs> no. Pet, pet, Petros, you ain't, the church ain't built on you. And anybody that thinks you're the first pope, they're thinking way too small. I am the Christ. Amen. Amen. And upon this rock, I will build, he takes ownership, my church. And the gates of hell, the gates of Hades shall not prevail, have victory, have triumph over against it. it. We took it full circle. Good job, class. Y'all are the intermediate. You're at the basic class, y'all intermediate, but y'all ain't the advanced class yet. We could have been done, I'm two minutes over, not because of the class. Well, yeah, it is because you thank God Amen. that we can go to scripture. Yes. So those out there that heard this lesson, you got all the scriptures. You need to be saved. There's only one church, the church of Christ. Christ is the head of it. And we thank God that we can teach the gospel through his word and allow mankind everywhere to be saved. There may be somebody sitting in Russia watching this right now or seeing it online. They can be saved in Christ. They rang 20 bells to tell me to get out of here. So let us have a word of prayer. God bless y'all. Gracious God, our Father, we thank you for another opportunity to teach your word. Thank you for the, the hearts, the minds, those who participated in class today so that we might help others see the light of the gospel. We love you, Father. We thank you for your son. We thank you for the opportunity to be, to hear and believe and obey the gospel. May we show that light to others. In Jesus' name. Amen. We are adjourned until 10 a.m. Thank you.